Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of The Expansion Point. I am your host, Brad Johnson. Thank you so much for uh, coming by and tuning into this broadcast here on Google Plus Hangouts. So this is episode number two, and what we're going to be talking about today, or rather in just in a couple minutes, we're going to be talking about crop circles in ancient alchemy. So we're going to be looking a little bit more deeper into the phenomena of the crop circles, not only in regards to what's been happening you know, worldwide with a lot of the circles coming together, a lot of the crops, but also representing a lot more of their energy and how this can be duplicated through yourself, through your own personal lifestyle, to helping yourself with enhancement. We're also going to be looking a little bit more into ancient alchemy, but basically more so about how the times of ancient alchemy are now returning to us in our current era and seeing how they are bringing in new types of manifestation, how people are able to kind of move into that alignment of what ancient alchemy represents and making it more modernized. And so we're going to be looking into that a little bit more. But first, what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with a bit of a brief meditation. This is just going to help anchor in some energies, center our beings, and just bring ourselves into the alignment that, again, if you have questions that you want to post for the expansion point here, you can just go to the Q&A app, type in your question, ask the question, and in the last half of the show, uh, Adronis is going to be coming through, and we'll be doing some Q&A. Uh, he may also be coming through and giving his interpretation as well, relating to ancient alchemy and, of course, the crop circles. So I'm going to go ahead now and just kind of direct us through, guide us through a guided meditation. So let's just make sure we're all relaxed, nice and comfortable, making sure that our bodies are free of any particular points of strain. I'm going to go ahead and close my eyes. Feel free to close your eyes now. And let's just take a deep breath in through our nose and slowly out through our mouth. Just feeling all the energies of the day, if there's stresses, feel that energy evacuating on your exhale. Breathing in through your nose, and slowly out through your mouth, releasing all that energy. Breathing in through your nose again, and breathing out all that energy. And one more time, breathing in through our nose. And slowly out through our mouth. And just relax yourselves and breathe normally. And just allow yourself now to tune in to the chakra of your heart. Just be aware of your heart beating. Be aware of the rhythm. Feel the energy between the entirety of your body and the connection to your heart. And as you become more aware of the expansion of the heart, as you notice its rhythm, as you feel its beating, imagine as if a green colored orb is completely covering your heart chakra. And that every time you breathe in and breathe out naturally, that orb now starts to expand, grow bigger and bigger. And that the more relaxed you get, the more of the acceleration of growth this green orb creates. Just be completely relaxed, completely aligned, and completely centered. Just let that orb of green light expand throughout your entire field. Let it expand throughout your entire space, throughout your whole environment. And as you see this green orb expanding, I want you just to imagine that there are colors of green gradients that are just swirling within this orb. You are seeing different mixtures of green light, like a gradient that is just moving throughout this orb, enveloping you, your environment, with unconditional love. Just feel that energy harmonizing not only yourself, but your space. And 
just let that energy now, as a bubble, as this sphere, as this orb, imagine now that that is now expanding to the size of the Earth herself. That you now feel your green orb of energy from your heart chakra encasing all of planet Earth. And just imagining within your mind's eye that everywhere you see around you is colored with the overlay of these green radiants. And they represent the love coloring of these green energies contained within your heart chakra everywhere you look within your mind's eye. The love of the green heart chakra is all around you. Let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And let's just feel that orb of energy now starting to phase in between what we understand as our physical reality and the reality of the green heart energy. It's just starting to fade back into a full color spectrum. Just as if all that green gradient is now dissolving harmoniously into our own physical reality. That the bubble itself is dissolving, phasing back into our full spectrum of planet Earth. As you have now embedded your love energy to yourself, to your environment, and to Mother Earth herself. And just take a moment now to come back into the present moment. Feel free to wiggle out your hands, wiggle your toes, flutter your eyes if you like, just like you're awakening for a dream. And when you are ready, you may feel free to open your eyes. <clears throat> All right. Well, that felt fantastic. So thank you, everybody, again for being a part of this episode today, episode number two. Again, we are having these episodes every two weeks. So again, remember to join us again in the next two weeks as we'll be having another episode. A lot of ideas still in my head about what to talk about next. There's definitely no shortage. But again, just stay tuned to Google Plus Hangouts, to my Google Plus account, and you'll find out more information about what the next episode will entail. Also, another particular announcement is that I will be doing another Google Plus Hangouts event tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific. This is the Google Plus Hangouts uh, Conscious Matrix Interviews, and I will be interviewing two people this time. It will be uh, Antonio Corey, who uh, is an uh, auteurist aunt on YouTube, and another friend of mine, Christina Martin. So I'll be doing a really wonderful interview with those two tonight. We'll be talking about ET awareness. We'll be talking about consciousness expansion and all kinds of other great things. So feel free to tune into that tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Okay. You can again go to my Google account, you'll find it there, and feel free to uh, join in on the conversation. Again, you can always interact with the Q&A. Also, there is a, another event coming up in the end of August that is called the Portal to Ascension Cosmic Reunion. You can go to portaltoascension.org. We have a very exciting event planned. It's going to be myself, Amatea Ra, Peter Sterling. I can't remember the other guy, but, <laughs> but it's all on the website there. Uh, but uh, you can feel free to check that out, portaltoascension.org. That's going to be happening on August 23rd. Very, very exciting online event. It's all about extraterrestrial consciousness, awareness, contact, channeling, planetary upliftment, cosmic consciousness. It's going to be very, very exciting. So feel free to check that out at portaltoascension.org. All right, guys. So we are going to go ahead and get started with today's topics, which are crop circles and ancient alchemy. Now, again... Crop circles really aren't something new. It's not that they just started a couple decades ago. They have actually been around for many, many centuries. But a lot of their formations have just been very, very simple. Sometimes it's a circle. Sometimes it's a diamond. My own bad type of uh, way to draw these. Sometimes it's a spiral. And that over the ages, they have been able to evolve. But this has been happening for a very, very long time. Well, what's going on? What's the whole point of these symbols? Why are we seeing all these amazing type of symbols and the crops? You know, we look at crop circles like on the Wilkshire Plains, all together within the UK. What's happening here? And of course, they are turning up into many other different spots. 
What's the point? Why are we getting these particular forms of prompt service? Well, these are basically messages from our own collective consciousness. Now, sometimes they can be brought forward through the Earth herself. Sometimes they can be brought forward through extraterrestrial intervention. And again, some of them have just been absolutely beautiful. You just basically take a picture of that crop circle, you know, from a sky view, and being able to print that out, and just being able to do a meditation on it. This is how you really are able to discover the genuine quality of a crop circle. Usually if you see like crop circles that, let's say, if they had a really kind of bad circle like this, you can tell it's very, very disproportionate. Maybe they got some other bad circles like this. Well, then you obviously know that's a hoax. So unless there's a bunch of extraterrestrials out there getting drunk off hooch, you know, oh, here, here's a circle here, you know, and trying to do that, then, you know, it's, yeah, it's not going to be that good. So you're going to notice a lot of the man-made created ones. And there are people out there that do that. And you, basically what you're looking for is you're looking for that beautiful type of symmetry. You're seeing these circles that are just so perfectly formed. There's no skewing in regards to the drawing of the crop circle relating to all these shapes, all these geometries. Everything just looks absolutely perfect. What you'll also notice within many of the crop circles is a substance known as white powder gold. Now this actually happened several hundred years back as well too. That these crop circles would be filled with this white powder gold substance and the people would actually be able to go into these crop circles, they would be able to do meditation, they were able to actually do fertility rituals, they were actually able to you know, have, a, have a blast of love making in the crop circle because basically what the crop circles are doing is that they're forming vortexes. So it's not so much that you're just looking at a symbol, you're actually looking at an actual vortex that is actually helping to harmonize the planet. Now a lot of these particular forms of crop circles, not all of them, but a lot of them, have actually been placed through spells through a lot of the ancient masters over time. So again, there are those that are extraterrestrial. And we'll get back into the white powder gold here in just a few minutes. But there are some that are extraterrestrial, absolutely. There have been some that have been interventional. Basically, a lot of ancient masters are considered to be like druids, sages, witches, alchemists. All of these ancient masters of old have actually placed harmonious spells upon many of the lands contained like in the Wiltshire Plains and many other areas that have been actually uh, embedded with a lot of these uh, landscape spell work. And so basically what they're doing is they're placing these spells to actually harmonize the land and they are working together not only in the consciousness of Mother Earth but in many other different strands relating to her consciousness. You have elemental realms that are working together on behalf of service to Mother Earth relating to these crop circles. You have a lot of different forms of nature spirits. You do have the extraterrestrials and you do have a lot of the ancient masters. And so a lot of these crop circles are coming back because we even see at times that you know, this is a really, really familiar type of symbol. What's going on? What the spell is actually doing is that it's making the land alive to the point where it is actually able to communicate with us. The land is a sentient intelligence. So when we're looking at all of these different areas within the Wilkshire Plains, within the UK, you know, wherever else they may be, the land has developed a type of communication working together with the earth. So it's as if the energy of the earth is just sharing this information through all these different branches and is actually communicating together through the land to again communicate a lot of these purposes of these crop circles. A lot of them have given predictions. A lot of them again are parts of harmony helping to actually integrate and fractalize a lot of the human collective consciousness. Now when you're staring at a crop circle, for example, it's not just the idea of a pretty picture. It's not the idea, oh my goodness, that is so amazing. That is such a beautiful thing. You know, look at the way the geometry is. You're seeing this beautiful, you know, mandala that's happening. You're seeing all these beautiful geometric circles. It's almost like looking at water crystal experiments. You're seeing all the geometry here. But it's much more than that. You're actually being recoded. And this is exactly what the whole purpose is to many of these ancient masters, these druids, these sages, these witches, these alchemists have been instructed to do hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It's that they've actually been able to perform ceremony upon the land and actually alchemize 
instructions to how the land would be kind of like a projection screen and that the land is actually harmonizing these particular codes through genuine perfection of fractal patterns that are actually helping to awake the collective consciousness. So it's a really, really great thing when you feel, when you look at some of these geometrically aligned fractal masterpieces of crop circles being shown on the 7 o'clock news or the 6 o'clock news, being shown on internet sites all over the world. It's fantastic. That's sacred circuitry. You know, that's exactly what it's all about. You're basically looking at a geometrical pattern that is aligned with our DNA, that is aligned with our energetics, that is aligned with every single one of us, and it's consciously moving into a collective awakening. Now, this is also why people are now starting to draw sacred art. They're looking into fractal art. They're, de they're developing all these amazing types of geometrical art or hyperspatial art. It's fantastic. And that's just reproducing another extension to crop circles. Now again, we just call them crop circles. That's a nice little name because again, they do appear a lot of the crops. But there have been crop circles that can actually appear in your own backyard. The funny thing actually happened to me uh, back in 2008 when I was just starting to awaken. Uh, it was around, I think it was around November 2008. And I woke up uh, you know, about 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was snowing outside. And the place that I was in was, you know, we didn't have a lot of neighbors. There wasn't people, you know, being, everybody was just really, really keeping to themselves. You know? And I lived there for, well, about two, three years. And I just woke up one morning and I saw this circle that was created out of snow. And it basically just looked like that, but a nice kind of formation of pattern. I actually did take a picture of it, but unfortunately a lot of that uh, old pictures got lost. But I did take a picture of it and it was this geometrically uh, beautiful aligned circle within a circle created right out of snow. It was very, very nice. It was just so brilliant. I was just amazed by it. I said, what's going on? This is incredible. You know, I've woken up all the times, you know, that it's snowed, and it's never done that before. So this can also be the idea that invitations can actually be sent out. Now, it may be a little bit challenging if you don't even have a backyard agreed. But again, if you have the means, if there is snow in your backyard, or maybe you have long grass, you know, you may be amazed at what you're able to discover based upon that asking. Because it wasn't too long ago that I was asking for requests that, you know, all of this information that I was getting, please make sure I'm not crazy. You know, can you please give me some type of evidence that you guys are out there, right? And then, poof, this little booby nipple. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this circle within a circle uh, came into, uh, into my backyard and appeared. You know, something very, very simple, but something that was just so incredible. Uh, that took place there. So I was just really, really amazed about how that came about. Now, some people were actually able to have dream circles, as you may call it. Basically, the whole representation of crop circles or the geometry of the crop circles that come together, and you're actually just seeing these fractal patterns coming into your mind. You can get that in meditation. You can get that in dream state. But these are all just uh, a collective aspect when it comes to the crop circle phenomena to assist in DNA awakening, to assist in energetic awakening, to assist in consciousness awakening. These particular codes that as soon as you see it, bam, it goes to work. The physical mind may be very, very confused. What is this? You know, people are just starting artwork in the crop circle, the crop fields, you know, this is hoax, this is BS, blah, 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 blah. And the conscious self will just completely dismiss it. The subconscious won't, because the subconscious is saying, yes, we recognize this. We're going right to work now. We're working with the DNA. The body responds to it. The DNA responds to it. Your energy field responds to it. You may not. You know, you may just want to be, no, no, I don't care. Okay, that's nice. It's a nice little pattern in the, in the grass, in the crop fields there. Who gives a crap? Okay, time to continue on with my work. Time to do my job, right? That's fine. But nonetheless, it's being worked on. It's very, very similar to how all of us, on this planet are being upgraded. Now, you can be the most die-hard, insane skeptic of all. Nonetheless, you're still being worked on. You're still being upgraded. The subconscious is constantly going into new platforms of being. It's rising itself into new subconscious levels. It's moving us into new opportunities that we never thought we would attract. Are crop circles responsible for that? They can be in a certain way, yes. But nonetheless, whether you believe it or not, you are expanding. Whether you believe it or not, you are evolving. Whether you believe it or not, your body is transforming more into a hybridization of 
the feeling of more light, hybridized light, so to speak. We're moving from a carbon to a silica, hybridized life form. That's where we're moving to. This is why a lot of children are now starting to develop triple strand DNA, triple helix. There have actually been some reports of scientists discovering in new, a lot of the new children, triple strand helix DNA. And now that's starting to come together on our planet. And some of these children are just absolutely amazing. You know, we are going to be looking into ancient alchemy here in a few minutes. But it's just absolutely amazing about what a lot of these new children can do. You have children, you know, three to five to seven to nine to 12 years old, and they are ingenious. And the funny thing is that a lot of them have been accused of being autistic, of having ADHD, oops, ADHD, schizophrenic, etc. But they are brilliant kids. They're brilliant children. But because they're not able to socialize within the norm, we have to throw these particular labels on top of them. Right? But again, it all comes back to the point that our bodies are changing. That a lot of the assistants of the crop circles are bringing in some really amazing beings and that our children are really just a whole new species within themselves. But what about the white powdered gold? You know, what's that all about? All right. So again, we have an example of a spiral here that would represent the crop circle, and we're just seeing this entire crop circle being covered in this white powdered gold. Well, what is it with this white powdered gold? Well, that's basically the substance of light that has been condensed into physical matter. And basically, sometimes, uh, depending upon the... Uh, provider of the crop circle, sometimes it can be extraterrestrial basis where they're actually just doing this with a combination of light and sound. And through this light and sound, it basically functions into pitches that are beyond the human ear and within minutes. You have all of these crops that are still alive. They are not harmed when they're folded over. And the, the entire field is just littered with this white powder gold substance. And this is the condensement of light. And so you have white powder gold, and this is why it feels so enriching to stand in the middle of the crop circle. You know, I'd love to go to the Wiltshire Plains when a crop circle happens. I have talked to people who have been in crop circles, and they said it is probably the most amazing thing. It's like being right in the center of a pyramid. It feels absolutely amazing. You just feel all this energy. It feels like the entire environment has been purified. That's exactly what it feels like. It's like you're just in this column of energy within the boundaries of the crop circle, and it may even extend a little bit further. But right when you're in the center, the heart of the crop circle, you feel this energetic pulse. You feel this purity that comes together. And it just heightens your senses. It heightens your, your intuition. Uh, people have made love in crop circles. You know, that's great. <laughs> Might need to do uh, some plans for that. <laughs> like, hey, here's a good date. Why don't we go to a crop circle? But that's exactly what they did. They were able to do fertility rituals. They were able to do sacred ceremonies. They were able to bless the crop circles uh, just with their own energy, you know, giving affirmations, abundance, manifestation that would come together. It's just this incredibly powered resonator as you would experience these crop circles that are being filled with this white powder gold substance. And again, that's just another way to determine the genuineness, so to speak, of the crop circle itself. When you see one that is littered completely with this white powder all around it, then you know that that is very, very genuine. Unless you're going to have some, you know, three drunken Irishmen with uh, stomping down crops and having like a bag of flour, <laughs> you know, and for, oh, okay, we got to make sure we use the white powder gold substance. We got to make sure we really, really buy into this, right? So that's fine. But this is primarily what a lot of people have been able to discover is the white powder gold substance. Now that white powder gold can be used into what we refer to as Formus. Now, of course, there's many other different forms you can do, but this is one very, very popular one, which is orbitally rearranged monatomic elements. So, actually, that's not even supposed to be. Orbitally rearranged monatomic elements, or ormus. You can even spell it with a U as well, too. But basically, utilizing substances like white powder gold or colloidal silver, other particular different types of metals, metallurgy, uh, also representing like sea salts, a lot of different types. There's actually one of my favorite websites to go to to actually get uh, Ormus is uh, bluewateralchemy.com. So if you have not been able to check it out yet, I'd recommend it. they got some really fantastic products 
actually just purchased uh, their white light uh, Ormus elixir, and it's uh, it's been really really incredible. Like for me, it's it's sometimes challenging to have to to tell because I'm always in a very uplifting positive mood, and I haven't really felt down, or depressed, or feeling restricted in some ways. And some people would say, well, you know, Brad, can you give me an update about how you're feeling? It's just I feel great. <laughs> I feel fantastic. I feel expansive. I feel amazing. And I feel like I have a lot of those rushes each and every single day. You know, there may be times where you, I always hit a low at times. You know, that happens. I'm like this. But, you know, for me, just after taking it, um, you know, from the times that I have taken it, it feels very uplifting. I feel like my body is just, it feels a lot more uh, increased in daily energy. I feel like my energy is moving up when I take a lot of this Ormus as well, too. So it really helps to spike a lot of my energy. I feel that my focus is very much improved as well, too. Improved mentality, more clarity of thought, etc. So a lot of that has been happening uh, when I usually take the Ormus. But again, if this is something that interests you, then you can go to bluewateralchemy.com, check it out. Feel free to uh, just give it a try. It's not going to harm you. It's definitely made from a lot of really amazing... I mean, their, their whole recipes, so to speak, are very, very vast. So I just would recommend you go checking out the site. A lot of them are basically collecting like a lot of different sea salts and Himalayan salts and all these different types of salts and uh, this this, brie, this brew of elixir that comes from different areas of the world, basically at 19.47 latitude as well too, which is basically the harmonic centers of our planet. If you were to basically see our planet like this and you're able to put a Merkaba of a sun, or a star tetrahedron, you would basically have these two points operating at 19.47 latitude. And a lot of what they get for their own elixirs are found at 19.47 latitude, the harmonic areas of the planet. So again, that's something you can check out. All right, so that's the crop circles. So now we're going to be looking more into the idea of ancient alchemy. Well, what's happening? Ancient alchemy is now starting to come back. I mean, it's just amazing about the type of people that I talk to, people who are just becoming new types of alchemists. We have people who are able to do sacred circuitry. We have people who are able to do language of light. There are people who are able to create organite. There's people who are able to create ormus. We have people who are creating new ideas for spells in witchcraft of white light magic. You have people who are able to take the elements of metal and being able to condense them into elixirs and being able to have that type of feeling of ancient alchemy where we'd always utilize the idea of chemistry, coming back into actually helping ourselves improve our body, improve our DNA, improve our consciousness, expand ourselves in that way. So the ancient knowledge of much of the alchemists are returning. So again, these are just small examples of that. You know, if you can really just look at a piece of paper or if you can look at a whiteboard and you can just see like geometries that are moving together and that you are bringing that into the physical, you know, you are transmuting that energy. You're bringing all of that energy of the ethers and bringing it into the physical world. The alchemist was all about being able to connect the spirit world and the physical world together and harmonize in that way, and being able to understand more of the secrets of the universe, you know, all about back to ancient occult practices. So a lot of the ancient alchemy is coming back into our times, uh, you know, being able to turn lead into gold in that sense. I haven't met anybody who has done that, but, you know, that certainly is possible. It all depends on who you talk to, because there still are a lot of people that want to go on to that level. So, you know, okay, here's a big thing of lead, turn it into gold if you want. You know, it's not to say that it hasn't happened, it's just that a lot of people that have tried to do it uh, may have not been successful, but there is no doubt that a lot of the ancient mystery schools, or looking at Egypt, you know, a lot of different uh, mystery schools from all over the world have been successful in actually turning these different forms of metals into gold, just transmutational effects. Working together again with sacred ceremony, looking into the idea of the power of the, uh, the ancient wheels, looking into the idea of the medicine wheels, even being able to create vortexes. Now, here's a little interesting thing as well, too. Is that if we're looking at spirals, we're looking at two particular directions of energy. So we have one here that is clockwise. We have one here that is counterclockwise. Right? The clockwise represents the idea of the ethereal becoming material. 
And so you will notice this in a lot of ancient practices. And again, this is coming back to us in regards to a lot of different alchemized ways into more of our current era. That when one is able to actually walk in a spiral or even walk in a circle in a clockwise direction, what you are actually doing is by blessing that uh, direction of where you're moving, you're actually bringing in ethereal energy into physical matter. So usually if we want to go into, you know, walk around our house and create a vortex, what we're doing is we're giving a blessing to the house, we're giving a blessing to our space, we're giving a blessing to ourselves, and we're containing that energy of the blessing, and we're walking around in a clockwise direction. Now, again, you can do that multiple times, and it really is just an intuitive feeling to where you feel that the vortex itself has been supercharged. On average, usually about 10 to 15 times is very good. Okay. And this is just an ancient alchemical practice that's now coming back into our current life. If you want to purge particular energies that are perhaps intrusive, maybe you have some, some energies that don't feel too good, maybe you're feeling that there's people, uh, you know, uh, people in spirit that are walking around your house that may be very, very disruptive, whatever it may be, then what you're going to do is you're going to create a counterclockwise circular direction. Okay? So just being able to walk around in a counterclockwise circle around your entire property. You can feel free to invoke you know, angelic consciousness. You can feel free to invoke your guides, your higher self, you know, higher degrees of light, higher purity of light, violet light, whatever you like to do. That's fine. But what you're doing is you're actually creating these alchemical circles around your property, and you can actually create this particular vortex. And you basically kind of just stop yourself, you center yourself for a moment, you hold out your hand, and you kind of just get an impression. And if you really kind of feel that energy, it's almost like you're feeling the energy circulating. You feel the energy moving into the complementary direction to where you were walking. And again, you don't have to go like, you know, run, 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 run. You're taking your time. You're just taking one foot at a time. One particular recommendation I would give is if you are doing a clockwise direction or a counterclockwise direction, whatever you choose to do, create keywords when you are creating your vortex. I have done a video in the past relating to creating a vortex. But what you're doing is you're creating keywords. Okay? So if you want to anchor in pure ethereal energy, bringing that into the physical plane, then you may want to say anchor. Neutralize. Purify. Okay, those are three words that you like to use every time you're taking a step, okay? Anchor, neutralize, purify. Okay? And continuing to do that with every single step you take. And uh, it's not like you're making yourself dizzy, you're, you're taking your time. You're very much just going on, in fact, in a very, very slow pace. And as you start to do this, you come to center, you feel that energy out. Oh, man, the energy now just feels really, really great. Feel free to put a crystal in the center of that circle. If you're able to kind of imagine what your house looks like or your apartment building may look like from the center point, put a crystal in that area. Put a pyramid in that area and represent that as the center beacon point and just walk a circumference around that entire circle. Okay, So that's just a little thing that you can try as well, too, is being able to... Uh, create these vortexes. This is all part of ancient learning that's coming back together with us right now. Another very interesting thing as well is radionics technology. This is basically all built upon ancient Atlantean technology. So again, a lot of the Atlantean wisdom coming back to us. Now, interestingly enough, synchronistically enough, I had just received a radionics device here today, and now it's actually just starting to get into practice. I'm actually just doing a health uh, practice on myself uh, from an area that I've been working on for some time, going into meditation. It has improved in some areas, but just being able to do this just a couple hours ago, I'm feeling an immense difference from the radionics technology. So with radionics, we're looking completely at vibratory capturing technology. Okay, so it basically represents the idea of a duplication of a vibration that has been created through intent. And it's basically creating an autopilot situation. Again, this is just a version 
based back into a lot of Atlantean technology. Atlanteans would use this through crystals, usually with a lot of their healers. They would come in and they would be able to empower thought into the wand to represent a replication of the full rejuvenation effect of an individual. You could basically come into these healers if you're saying, you know, uh, just in a lot of pain or, you know, your back's cramped up, whatever it may be, and they're actually able to program their own wands into restoring you back into a time of your physical prime. And so you come out there feeling like you're 21 years old again. That's just an example of how radionics is duplicated now, just in a different way to how we understand technology. A lot of it is done with uh, organite, a lot of it is done with Tesla coils, a lot of it is done with crystals as well too. But basically it's coming together and it's duplicating the vibratory capture of our energy. And that is just completely instrumented by thought, so whatever that may be. If that's improving your finances, if that's helping with a, an ailment, an issue that you have, maybe it's a bad cold, maybe it's a bad headache, you know, you want to have that career of your dreams, you want to have a new relationship. And basically what it's doing is it's putting the uh, device into a 24-7 Zen mode. Okay. That's basically what's happening. It's as if you are going into Zen meditation utilizing this particular device, and it's doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for as long as it continues to operate in regards to fine-tuning itself to the basis of this thought. Now... I had an interview uh, just a while back with a friend of mine, Connie Willis, and she was talking about this form of radionics technology. So again, this is a big part of the ancient alchemy, because we are looking about how this particular device itself is just is very reflective a lot about what they were able to do in the ancient times. But basically, she was talking to me about this type of radionics device, and that there is a website that you guys can go to if you're interested in purchasing one. I believe it's only about 200 some odd dollars plus shipping. Uh, it is called Dr. Mulder's Wishing Machine .com, Okay, It's about a little over $200, and I was able to purchase mine, I think about a week and a half, two weeks ago, about that, and it just showed up in the mail today. Uh, but again, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's very, very good. Uh, the body regeneration healing method that I use is a synthesis to the idea of radionics, to, again, this type of ancient alchemy. And that basically all you're doing is you are fine-tuning vibratory channels. So let's put B, C. You're fine-tuning vibratory channels with these particular dials. It's almost like tuning a radio. And what you are doing is you're utilizing a type of kinesiology that is being brought forward to this plastic cover. And you're just rubbing your thumb against this little plastic cover while you're tuning these dials and while you're thinking about the manifestation you're looking to bring into the radionics. When you notice that your hand, your thumb sticks, which means it's no longer slippery, it's like the pad has caught it, then that's giving the indication in the similarity to kinesiology that that particular dial has been tuned. It's representing a vibratory resonance through the, um, the form of how the device is developed. Again, there's several different ways to how radionics technology can be developed. But all you're doing is you're fine-tuning the vibrational capacity, the vibrational channel to be able to invoke this thought. And it's kind of like taking that thought and placing it in a bottle, going bam, and that's it. And the power of these particular devices is extraordinary, being able to really amplify that connection. Now, again, some people may say, well, is this trying to replace meditation? No, not at all. It's the whole idea that it's only offering an assistance. It's only offering an additional form to bringing forward a manifestation. Some people might say, well, okay, is that kind of like a placebo effect? Yeah, basically. And, you know, the very interesting aspect about placebos is that they've been way more successful than medication. So that's basically what's, what it is. It definitely is a placebo effect. It definitely is something that's placebo 24-7 because you're capturing that thought. You're capturing that intention, right? If your intention is to purify your body, you know, to detoxify your body, then that's basically what you're doing. You're capturing that particular thought through the radionics device. That radionics device is now cycling that particular thought for you, just as if you were to go into a Zen meditation state and put all of your focus entirely on rejuvenating your body of that detoxification. Right? That's all it's doing. It's basically doing it for you. But you have been the programmer. You are the programmer to that thought. So without you, you know, it wouldn't be able to do anything. 
So that's a very, very fantastic, fascinating uh, technology itself. Again, I've just been using this for a couple hours, and the area that I've been working on uh, in regards to increased vitality has been like this, shot up. So it's been absolutely amazing. And it's not to say I'm giving up meditation. I will certainly be using meditation, as I always do. But again, this is just a helpful little tool. And it is definitely generating a placebo effect. Absolutely. I would recommend placebos way more than I'd recommend medications. That's just my personal view. Okay. So what is this telling us in hindsight? It shows that a lot of what we have been doing for thousands and thousands of years, to all the incarnations that we've been having, through all the ancient knowledge, that we've been discovering in, in ancient master schools, in, in Egypt, in Atlantis, in Peru, uh, in, in Europe, you know, in Africa, all of these particular uh, ancient forms of knowledge are now just coming back around full circle, and that we are now versionizing them into a modern approach. Now, a lot of people will go back to the ancient rituals. They'll look back at the ancient scrolls, you know, if they, whatever it may be, and just seeing a lot of the ancient texts, and they start to re, re, you know, re utilize that in their form of approach related to those texts. And that's all fine and good. You don't have to really go back to the ancient ways of how it needs to do. On the contrary, the ancient ways are returning, but the way that they were performed anciently are evolving. So the whole idea is that the way that we would understand a lot of sacred rituals, a lot of things that we would understand about spells, a lot of things we would understand about other different alchemical practices are evolving into a new shape. Okay? They do not have to be uh, renditioned appropriately from something that may have been written a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, five thousand years ago. They're meant to be replaced, and that's what we can do. You need to look into the essence of exactly what that alchemy represents, to representing your own personal expansion of consciousness, to helping yourself move into new aspects. Uh, transcending yourself past these barriers. So you have the capability of doing that. It's about looking at the heart of the document itself, the heart of the ritual. Rituals are meant to be surpassed. And this is why I usually don't subscribe too much to a lot of the ancient people who preserve a lot of the old ways. With a great deal of respect for them, uh, it's just not what I look for. It's more so in the idea that those are becoming transcended. It's all about being able to take all of these essences of what truly represents harmony and higher frequency and transforming it into something that's even more simple. The complication in regards to a lot of these ancient alchemy rituals was all basis for protection. But because so many of us are coming upon the planet as new children, young adults, and we're starting to see a lot of this transformation take place, now we're starting to utilize the rebuilding of those ancient alchemical practices into something much more modern. The radionics is one example. The ormus is an example. Sacred circuitry is an example. All of these particular forms, our artwork, the way that we create art is an example. The way we use the power of our words is an example. It's all alchemy. And it's all just dancing now back together with us full circle, thousands and thousands of years, coming back together more ripe than it has ever been in our planet's history. So it's a very, very exciting time. So really look into the idea that if you are looking into a lot of these ancient practices, etc., really look into the, the discovery of what they are attempting to convey and being able to develop that into a whole new approach that is harmonious for yourself because it really does follow a science of the simple. And again, the alchemy is coming back. It's an amazing time to be alive on this planet. I'm blown away by the type of people I meet on a daily basis. It blows me away. People who thought they could never channel before are channeling. People who thought they could never do healing are healing. People who are just making these immense revelations about themselves, you know, extraterrestrial contact or being able to be on board ships or having these one-way relays telepathically about information, being able to say language of light, you know, being able to do language of light transmissions. Right? <laughs> That's a little example, but again, you're, you're just going into that particular flow with the language of light, you're going to that flow with sacred circuitry, you're going into that flow with artwork, you're going into that flow of returning back to this new way of alchemist, you know, being an, alchem an alchemist, looking into new alchemy is a fantastic way to be alive. So really dive into this as deep as you can and make it your own. All right. Okay, guys, so we're going to go ahead and take a look and see if there are any questions.
So we're getting up to about the last 15 to 20 minutes of the show. All right, so we do have three questions here. And uh, I'm going to be bringing Jonas here uh, in in just a moment. So we have right now Sherry on, who's asked some questions. If you guys do have any other questions in regards to what we talked about today on the show, by all means, feel free to send it in. Uh, but I will go ahead and uh, pull up the first question here. Okay, the first question is, can we recreate the geometry of crop circles, I guess, in art, and have the same sort of effect? Okay, that's very good. So thank you very much, Sherry, for that question. So I'm going to go ahead and bring Adronis in through this kind of standing, channeling pose, and he will be able to address that. Again, the question is, can we recreate the geometry of crop circles, uh, I guess, in art, and have the same sort of effect? Okay, so one moment. <coughs> <clears throat> we are here at this time, and we bid you greetings, and thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this particular broadcast being brought forward through your internet collective consciousness. Relating to the question that has been shared, can we recreate the art, as it were, pertaining to the crop circles, being able to reproduce it in our own way? Absolutely. That's the whole point, is that these geometries themselves are not just simply, again, pretty pictures. They are not so much in the idea that you are looking at something that is beautiful, but they are basically representing the hemispheric patterns of your own geometrical alignments through a 144-degree grid, or dimensional grid, and that these particular alignments, through what you have already discovered, through the awareness of these particular fractal patterns, are actually imbuing themselves appropriately within your own being to be reconstructed. The whole premise to the notion is that it is intent. The intent is coming back together, whether that intent be conscious or subconscious. Nonetheless, that intention is coming forward. The thought patterns that are being cycled through many of you right now are all coming to a point where even the conscious mind really may not understand what's going on. When many of you are able to create these artworks and you are in that sense focusing the conscious mind to produce these forms of artwork, you may still not understand about the relay, about the geometry, about the form of alignments that are taking place within these pictures. But nonetheless, the subconscious is giving you the information. It's bringing forward that information as a one-way relay to basically create these forms to which you would discover very commonly within your own crop circles. The whole idea with the crop circles is that they represent an amenity to the point of actually expanding yourselves on a collective consciousness level based upon mutual permissions that have been created throughout your origins of beings that may represent your own home-based beings, as it were, other elemental energies, extraterrestrial energies, etc. But they're all coming back together into a conscious state of awakening. You will also notice that many of these crop circles are actually stimulating the flow in regards to earth changes. And that these earth changes, even though they may feel that they pop up all of a sudden or that it may be very, very intense, that these energies are all about expulsion. The expulsion of energies created through the idea of the crop circles that also are in symmetry relating to what you would consider to be coronal mass ejections. So the whole idea is that you are looking more at a collective sacred circuit when you're looking at the idea of crop circles. But indeed, this can be reproduced. This can be recreated through your own means. It may not be that you are utilizing synthesis light to condense white powder gold contained upon your painting, or maybe you want to do something around those lines. That's fine. But the genuine nature is that the, shall we say, geometry, the fractal pattern, the alignment, the ratios that you are able to mathematically calculate or just mathematically feel, you may not have an idea of what it means, but you are basically bringing that energy together, and the subconscious is allowing the conscious as a vessel to purify this particular connection of visual appeal and that it is helping you in so many different ways that really cannot be fully described. You are anchoring in energies that you cannot even possibly imagine. These are harmonic gateways. These are portal transmissions that are being brought forward and anchoring in other particular timelines, other particular dimensional constructs that are now imbuing themselves like a web, like a finishing web that a spider is able to spin 
completely within yourself. And so yes, in your response, it is entirely possible to create the idea of crop circles, sacred circuitry, sacred geometry through your own means. That is the understanding. <clears throat> All right, thank you. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next question here. Thank you again, Sherry, for a really great question. Uh, so we're getting some more questions here. So let me just see uh, what else we got here. Um, OK, great. This is an interesting one here from Jay Lil. Uh, Jay asks, the Star of David is an interesting symbol. Does it have any meaning to address? All right, thank you very much, Jay. And I'll bring a Jonas in, and we'll see what he has to say with that. We thank you very much, Jay, for the opportunity of your interaction. The whole idea is that, yes, what you would consider to be the Star of David or the Seal of Solomon or Star Tetrahedron or a Merkaba or Merkaba Vessel is indeed a great importance to us because this is basically how we are initiating a transmission through the OEIEO -E interface, which you would understand as a galactic crystalline intelligence. And that basically the Merkaba Vessel is spinning in specific ratios through the idea of its top axis and to its inverted axis through what you would know as the masculine proportion and the feminine proportion in appropriate geometries and flow and frictional states that you would understand on a physical level that is imbuing a particular type of energetic field. The energetic field then summons itself into a type of antenna that then transmits our own particular coordination through all of those particular entities that are existing within our multidimensional awareness of sphere-based perspectives. The spheres themselves connect together with the entity in regards to a mutual aligned synchronistic state of consciousness. The Merkaba vessel itself spins itself appropriately in regards to thought command that is generated through our own intention to allow the synchronization of appropriate information that can be aligned appropriately to the conduit to then bring forward this type of information in this type of synapsis pattern that will allow the generation of particular interpretation to be as faceted and purified as possible through the initiation and inundation and alignments pertaining to that of what you would consider to be the Star of David the Merkaba vessel, the star tetrahedron, the seal of Solomon, etc. So, in a nutshell, yes, it indeed represents a very strong state of importance to us. We thank you for the interaction. All right, great. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, Jay. Great question. Okay, so um, we'll move on here. Okay, so again, we've got some more questions. So again, guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post it on here. we still got a few minutes left. Okay, I'm going to go down to our evolution, Earth Prospect. So we'll look at our evolution here. And our evolution asks, uh, will using sacred circuitry on a, on a staff help transmute and work with energies? And with the lion's gate, I hope that brings about another crop circle. All right, so thank you very much, our evolution. We thank you very much, our evolution, for the query itself. The answer is yes, but again, the whole idea is that let the intention follow before the idea of the instillment of the, the sacred circuit that you may produce. Now upon a staff there are many different ways in regards to the orientation of its efficient energy can actually be produced. What we would suggest primarily is actually communicating with the wood, if it is in that sense a wooden staff, that you are looking to create in regards to enhancement, to actually communicating together with the wood, placing your hands on, on upon the staff itself and being able to generate a particular response for sacred circuit crystallization. As this happens, you will be able to fundamentally, yes, create a portrait or create a drawing relating to the sacred circuit that is coming through. You may also initiate the idea of a language of light transmission. Now again, there are those who are somewhat shall we say, uncomfortable at some levels relating to the idea of sacred circuitry or language of light, because you may not be very fully aware about what's coming through, through the transformation of your own genetics, through the idea of the intention that is coming forward in the translation relating to the language of light. And in all honesty, the language of light is not really corporeally understood in the way that it is not really synthesized to condense into your common languages. It is a language of DNA. It is a language of material. It is a language of dimension. And so the whole idea comes down to the point of trust. If you are able to really bring yourself into a harmonious state, if you are able to truly advance yourself into that state of love and that reciprocates the energy of what you would consider to be a language of light 
or speaking in white tongues that we would suggest, or in that sense creating the idea of sacred circuitry that is symmetrical to the point of the intention itself. This would generate the authentic response to the feeling that has been produced based upon the sacred circuit and the language light in question in of itself, whether it be sacred circuit or language of light or a combination of both. This would then produce the synthesis in regards to the reaction of that intention. Your intention is all about the meaning of allowing these abstracts pertaining to the idea of sacred circuitry patternized in certain forms of geometric patterns that may also associate and follow together with the degree of what you would know as language of light transmission to initiate a higher response, to bring forward an advancement, to bring forward purity in that way. So it is, again, entirely possible to bring that particular form together relating to enchanting a staff. So we thank you very much for the interaction. <clears throat> All right, great. Thank you very much for our evolution for a great question. So let's uh, move on here. All right, so we're going to take uh, one more question before we conclude today, because we're getting close to the 6 o'clock p.m. hour here. Um, okay, here's a very interesting one from Sherryon. Okay, Sherryon asks, are we able to have three strands if we aren't born with it? Okay, thank you very much, Sherryon. One minute. <clears throat> thank you very much, Sherryon. Yes, the whole idea is that you are able to have three strands. In fact, that is what's happening through many of you right now. It is very similar to what you would know as a manufacturing quality that's being taken place here. Many of you may still have old models of cars, but even though you feel that the new models are in that sense a very, very beautiful thing to have, you may notice that there's a lot more features. It's not to say that those particular older models of cars cannot be upgraded in specific ways. Now, the whole idea is that the new models of human beings are being fed out through your own, shall we say, reproductive manufacturing. But basically what's happening right now is that the symmetry and alignment in regards to specific activations that are occurring through individuals are basically creating what you would consider to be a form of DNA mitosis that is coming together, that is actually splitting another particular strand coming together based upon the initiations of certain forms of activations that will allow this chemical transformation to take place. So yes, it is entirely possible if you were, for example, living upon this planet for quite some time and that you are following your heart and that you are expanding yourself and that you are gaining in further awareness, then you are moving more into the upgrade cycle, which would represent the idea of a DNA mitosis that would then represent the idea of a third strand being created throughout your own genetics. Now again, not all of you have this yet, but many of you do and much in regards to the repopulation protocol, much more in regards to the idea of the extension of awareness that is happening upon your planet, is all part and parcel of these significant upgrades to helping you to move into the alignment that is apprisable, relating to a three-strand or triple helix strand form of DNA energy, representing that idea of the chemical bonds. And again, what is happening right now is that you are moving into a bridge between the third and fourth density. Now, some of you have also asked us, well, Adronis, when are we going to move entirely into fourth density? And our approximation would be between the next 50 to 300 years. Right now, you are simply going through a hybridization, a genesis pertaining to the idea of a third density to fourth density bridges, and that they are slowly starting to condense. But because you are, in that sense, one of the first planets that have actually been able to experience this unlike any other planet out there, there are still certain levels of uncertainty that even many beings in higher dimensions cannot fully answer. So the idea of between the next 50 to 300 years is a very rough approximation, but again, that would be one of the most sufficient ways that we would convey it for now. It's not the idea that next year is going to happen and you're fully in fourth density. No, this is incorrect. The whole idea is that this is still something that needs to be generated in that way. Because basically what's happening is even though you have the plateau of hybridization between the third and fourth density states, which you would look into the idea of the formation of a tesseract, there still are those of you who are creating the idea of a common cube contained within a tesseract. And so the whole idea right now is for you to move more so into the extension of consciousness because it is a conscious upliftment, a collective upliftment that you are moving to in order to align yourself harmonically to the idea of what you would consider to be a pure fourth density grid. How will you know when you're in fourth density? When your own dream state feels more like your own reality. 
that's the basic idea. Now, many of you are going through the genesis of that aspect right now, and that is all part and parcel of the hybridization between the third and fourth density grids that are then becoming so to then eventually move you into what you would consider to be a fourth density nexus. That is primarily what is taking place at this time. We thank you very much for your interaction. We thank you very much for your inquiries. I am a journalist of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all of you. Thank you very much. Farewell for this timing, and we now return to the conduit. We will speak to you again in the infinite moment of now. Goodbye. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for, again, another wonderful episode. Sorry I couldn't get around to everybody's question today, but we are running short on time. So, again, please feel free to check back with us tonight here at 9 o'clock Pacific on Google Plus Hangouts. Just feel free to go to my Google Plus profile page, and you'll find the link there for the Conscious Matrix interviews tonight with Antonio Corey and Christina Martin. Uh, feel free to join us, and you can, by all means, leave some questions behind for that. And other than that, I will see you guys in two weeks' time for our next episode of The Expansion Point. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care. Have a wonderful week, and looking forward to speaking to you in two weeks' time. Take care. Namaste, and may it be well with you. Goodbye.